So uh, today I'm talking about the generative modeling, uh, integration of generative modeling and deep learning techniques. Okay, so let's start. So basically today I'm talking about what we are working on and what, what we have done in our laboratory uh, in Kyoto University. <clears throat> oh, uh, okay, so, uh, so actually, uh, in our project uh, called Onga Axel project, so uh, which was funded by the Japanese government. So in this project, uh, we have been uh, developing a, a web service called Songu for music listening and understanding. So in this service, uh, there are several functions. For example, uh, you can see the melody uh, estimation, Code estimation, uh, section estimation, and B, uh, B, B time detection. So, uh, and the, in our lab, we are now improving these existing functions, such as melody transcription and code estimation. And also, uh, we are uh, developing our new functions, such as music structure analysis and the drum transcription and the piano transcription. So these functionalities will be added uh, in near future in the song service. Okay, so the first, uh, I, I'd like to uh, point out the fundamental problem in automatic music transcription. So basically, our MT aims to uh, conversion of this input spectrogram into a piano roll representation like this. However, uh, both the generative or discriminative approaches using an acoustic model only has a performance limitation. Uh, actually, uh, a lot of musical, musically unnatural uh, musical notes uh, uh, cannot be avoided in this approach. So uh, we need to incorporate some language model for regularizing this conversion. So uh, this is an overview of our, of, of our generative approach. So um, we aim to formulate and optimize a probabilistic generative model that explicitly represents a generative process of a music state world. So what is a generative process? So first, uh, we assume that there is some musical grammar. So this is a, this is this corresponds to musical knowledge, human musical knowledge in the brain. And the, then some musical music composer uh, make a piano piano roll or a musical score according to this music grammar. And then the music spectrogram is generated uh, by some performer. Uh, and they, these processes correspond to the language and acoustic models uh, in, the, in this generative story. In contrast, uh, in the inference process, we aim to infer these latent variables because actually uh, we can observe only the music spectrogram. So uh, we have to uh, tackle these two problems, automatic music transcription and the grammar induction. So uh, ideally, uh, these two tasks should be uh, tackled simultaneously, but in this talk, uh, we focus on this music trans transcription part. Okay, so let me show you the uh, uh, technique uh, of in the early stage of this project. So this was done uh, five years ago. Uh, this, uh, this system is based on non-negative matrix factorization, uh, which was very popular for music trans transcription uh, at that time. And also uh, we use our Markov language model for code progressions uh, uh, to uh, regularize pitch combinations. So please listen. <laughs> Okay, so this is the transcription result.
yeah, this is not so good. So uh, at that time, the, uh, so the, this is the average performance of piano transcription based on NMF uh, and non-negative matrix factorization. So actually the performance was uh, significantly improved by using this language model, but the accuracy, the final accuracy is not sufficient. So, now uh, we aim to output the human readable symbolic musical scores, right? So most studies aim to output such a piano roll representation uh, in which time axis is not quantized at all. So the uh, not onset times, offset time and duration are represented uh, at the second unit. On the other hand, we aim to output the musical score, uh, written score, uh, which is human readable and playable. So this is so important. So this is so uh, we aim to uh, achieve genuine music transcription. However, uh, you know, there is a very huge gap between score estimation and the piano roll estimation. And also, uh, we want to deal with the various musical instruments, not limited to piano instruments. So this is another challenge. So this is the state of the technique uh, developed in our project. So uh, this, I think this is the world's only system that can output musical scores with practical accuracy. So it works mainly for typical popular music, uh, which with a 4 4 time signature. Uh, you can see a lot of demos in this web page. So enjoy this web page later. So, anyway, uh, listen to the uh, output uh, sample. So, like this. So, this is the uh, output of our system. And also, uh, we have been working on uh, transcription of uh, many musical elements, various kinds of musical elements. So combining these techniques together, we can uh, achieve the transcription for popular music like this. So this is very typical uh, J-pop popular music. So so this is the uh, transcription result. So now uh, we focus on only vocal, drum, and code. So, but now we are working on extending uh, the kinds of uh, musical instruments that can be dealt with. Okay, so to achieve this system, uh, such a systems, uh, we take a deep generative approach. Uh, we, are, we formulate a probabilistic generative model that consists of a deep acoustic model and a deep language model. But the so DNS, your neural networks are introduced if necessary. So uh, we don't want to abuse deep neural network techniques. So uh, actually, so if we have some uh, explicit, music, expi explicit musical knowledge, we can uh, make our, ex we can explicitly formulate some probabilistic model using hidden Markov model, Gaussian mixture model, NMF or something like that. However, so the music, uh, music knowledge is sometimes a black box. So in this case, uh, we can make, we, we have to use deep learning, deep neural networks uh, to uh, extract some meaningful musical knowledge uh, in, from the training data in a data-driven manner. 
So uh, this is our basic approach to automatic music transcription. So uh, this form uh, provides the model consists of two models, uh, language model and the acoustic model, uh, as we, uh, as I explained uh, already. So uh, this is a genera generation process. So this is inference process. So uh, based on this approach, uh, we uh, we tackled several uh, problems in AMT related to AMT. So actually, our AMT consists of uh, three uh, modules or three components: the acoustic model, the language model, and the inference technique. So uh, for each uh, for each tech model or technique, we can incorporate some deep learning techniques if necessary. So using this combination, uh, we can achieve each task uh, in a principled manner uh, according to the deep generative approach. Okay, so today I, I'm talking about concrete examples for uh, music structure analysis, singing transcription, uh, chord transcription, drum transcription, and piano transcription. The first one is music structure analysis. So this task uh, refers to uh, the simultaneous segmentation and rallying for music signals. So here, the section uh, is defined as a musically meaningful segment with a four, a eight, a 16 measures typically. So, uh, so this is here uh, input, uh, input, input signal and the, uh, we have to uh, detect segment, section boundaries from this musical signal. So this is called segmentation and also uh, uh, we want to estimate the levels uh, for the uh, separated uh, detected sections like this, birth A, birth B, chorus, and birth A. And importantly, uh, these musically dependent tasks should be solved simultaneously. So how to do this, how to, how to solve this problem? So uh, to, to do uh, to achieve that program, uh, one might take a discriminative approach based on deep learning. So, as uh, a typically supervised, uh, but the, the supervised standard supervised training of a labeling network, uh, such as uh, LSTM network, does not work well. So, as you can see, uh, you can see our uh, ex you can see ex Excessively frequent section transitions. Uh, this is the output. This is a, a output directly directly obtained by this labeling network. So the so the performance, however, the performance is severely limited by the amount of training data. So basically, in music information processing ADR, uh, we have only a limited amount of training data. So it's so uh, it's so precious data. So, uh, uh, so this means that we cannot we we cannot draw the full potential of a neural network such as a transformer. So which is a uh, which uh, made a big success in the other field with the with abundant training data. But the uh, the direct straightforward application of such a powerful very, very powerful and rich uh, expressive uh, deep neural network model uh, is very difficult. So however, the network output contains some useful information in this case. The output is actually close to the ground truth to some extent. So, the, so this means that uh, musical, mu musical knowledge would help to refine the network output. And the, okay, so what kind of musical knowledge should be used for music structure analysis? The first clue is homogeneity. Uh, this means that acoustic features are consistent in each section level. So uh, for example, in this example, uh, in, 
in bars A, the only guitar uh, is played, but the, in the bars B, uh, the combination of guitar and the vocal is used. So in this case, so, but the, so the acoustic characteristics of these uh, sections, verse A, verse B, are, are quite different. But in each section, uh, we can assume that the, uh, the distribution, uh, the ac acoustic features are relatively consistent. So this is a very important clue. The second clue is repetitiveness. Uh, this means that uh, music, musical elements are repeated in the same order for each section level. So in this case, uh, you can see the same chord progression in the bass A sections, C, Z, A minor, E minor. However, please note that uh, there are some some modifications in such a the, 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 such such a in such a repetition of chord progressions. So uh, we have to arrow, arrow some insertion, chord insertion, duration, and time stretch uh, to formulate some model. Okay, the third clue is regularity. So the durations of sections are consistent for each section level. For example, uh, basically, the section durations tend to be for eight, 16, 32 measures in typical popular music. And also the duration of each, uh, the duration of sections having the same section level should be consistent. Okay, so combining these crews are in, so we aim to uh, combine these three crews into a unified probabilistic model. So let me in, uh, explain the uh, generative story uh, of a music signal. So now we, I'm talking about the uh, generative modeling uh, of a music signal. So first, the a sequence of sections is stochastically generated according to some Markov model. So here, uh, we want to consider the durations of uh, duration of each section. To do that, uh, we are actually uh, we 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 use a hidden semi-Markov model that can explicitly represent the duration of each section. So that's why, uh, so by doing this, we can deal with the regularity characteristics. And then uh, the chord progression is stochastically generated according to the uh, underlying section sequence like this. So here uh, we can consider the repetitiveness. So this part corresponds to a language model. And then chrome vectors are generated uh, from the uh, determined code progression. On the other hand, MSCC features uh, representing acoustic characteristics are generated. So here uh, we uh, consider the homogeneity of acoustic features. In addition to this, uh, we can directly model the mirror spectrogram of a music signal, target music signal. So here, uh, but the, the, it's, it's very, the generative story, generative model of mirror spectrogram is very hard to represent. So that's why uh, we have to incorporate a deep neural network for implementing this generative model. So actually, uh, we use our LSTM-based generative model, deep generative model uh, for this part. So combining these components together, uh, we can formulate a unified probabilistic model. So the, the overall model is a hidden same model, uh, but, the, so, but the, it is partially uh, implemented by using a deep neural network. So uh, this part corresponds to acoustic model. So this is a generation process. 
In contrast, uh, we aim to perform the inference like this. So the inference process can be analytically uh, performed by using the EM algorithm because the overall structure is hidden semantic model so that we can uh, uniquely determine the optimal sequence of sections given for a given male spectrogram or for a given target music signal. So this is the experiment, experimental results. So the labeling accuracy was significantly improved by uh, using the uh, language model. So this performance seems uh, still low, but promising because the ground truth annotation uh, depend on annotators in music structure analysis. This is another uh, fundamental problem. So no uniqueness of the ground truth data. So, the, uh, so this issue should be uh, created in future work. And also, our, uh, in addition to the uh, three crews, uh, we, the, the fourth group, Novelty, was recently incorporated into the uh, unified probabilistic model. So how to do this? So actually, uh, the section transition probabilities of a Markov model are adjusted dy dynamically according to the output of a section boundary detection network. So finally, uh, this means that uh, at the end, uh, we use two networks. The one is for doubling network. The, the one is doubling network. The other is uh, boundary detection network. So these two networks are combined together into the uh, unified probabilistic model. Yeah, so uh, this corresponds to the chorus section. Yeah, like this. Okay, so let's move on to the uh, music transmission uh, part. So what is AMT? So in conventional studies, uh, one aims, aims at the piano roll estimation. So they are the but the time axis is represented uh, at the uh, unit of a second, and the most studies uh, for have uh, most studies focus on piano instrument only, and the singing voice has a, a scarcely been dealt with because of its a huge time frequency for for actuations. In contrast, uh, we aim at a score estimation. There, so importantly, the time axis is represented uh, uh, with, uh, at, at the score time level, uh, discrete time. So to do that, rhythm quantization is required, but the, this task is very challenging. But the, uh, in our project, uh, we can achieve, uh, we could achieve audio to score transcription of piano and singing voice. So let me introduce uh, these two studies in this talk. Okay, so uh, this is a deep generative approach to singing transcri transcription uh, for popular music. So first, we assume that there is some there is some sequence of keys uh, following a Markov model. So C major key to A minor key, some, or something like that. And then the a sequence of musical notes is stochastically generated according to two Markov models. One is metrical Markov model for onset transition. The other is our Markov model for pitch transition. So here we assume that onsets and pitches are independent. So this is a very uh, strong assumption, but it works uh, for such kind of transcription purpose. And then this part corresponds to our language model. And finally, our spectrogram is generated. Uh, from 
uh, are from the determined sequence of the musical notes. So this corresponds to an acoustic model. So however, so the, this, this acoustic generation process is so complicated. So we cannot explicitly represent how the music spectrogram is related to the sequence of musical notes. So that's why we have to use a deep neural network to uh, represent the association between, uh, the, um, be between the spectral and musical notes. So actually, so this CRNN is trained in a supervised manner by using a paired, by using paired data of musical notes and the spectrograms. And then, uh, we can use the discriminative model in the opposite way because so you basically the, this CRNN is used for estimating musical notes from the spectrogram. But we want to use this one in the generative direction. So they are, uh, I mean, so the CNN, CRNN is uh, follows the uh, discriminative discriminative direction but we want to uh, we want we, we want a generation we want a generative model so uh, using the actually uh, we uh, using the Bayes theorem uh, we can uh, transform the CR around CRNN based discriminative model to a generative model uh, yeah. and then we can uh, incorporate in, we can integrate such a generative model into the unified uh, hidden Seymanko model. The uh, so-called CRNN HSMM hybrid model. Once this uh, model is uh, formulated, uh, we can estimate the latent variables, the musical notes and keys in this case are estimated using the beta B algorithm. So this is a very simple optimization process. So this is generation, this is inference. So yeah, this is the uh, experimental result. The performance was significantly improved by incorporating the language model, the key and key and uh, the language model for keys and note and pitch transitions. So uh, you can see the significant improved performance in terms of titan level accuracies and the note level error rates. Okay, so let me show you some demo. Uh, this is the input data. So this is a, a transcription result obtained by integrating the language and the acoustic models. So if you don't use any language model, the output is like this. So uh, the language model uh, corrected such uh, errors uh, appropriately. So this is the effect of the integration. Okay. Okay, let's move on to the next topic, code transcription. So uh, this is a very, this task is very similar to music structure analysis because uh, this task basically refers to segmentation and labeling for uh, music signals. And the, uh, in, this in this task, uh, we take approach based on frame level code estimation and the Tatum level quantization uh, based on an assumption that B times are estimated in advance. And the, the, uh, a key point of this study is that uh, we, we consider that 
transcription and performance are two sides of the same coin. Uh, this means that, so this is a transcription uh, process correspond to generation. And the, this is the, ah, uh, no, the, this is the uh, inference process. And uh, this is the performance correspond to the generation process. So uh, these two processes are uh, linked together very closely. So uh, this calls for an idea to jointly optim jointly op jointly optimize the these two processes. And also, uh, we want to incorporate some language model, some code language model for regularizing this training. So first. Let me explain, introduce the mirror neuron hypothesis. So uh, in this hypothesis, uh, so according to this hypothesis, we can say that, so one refers to his or her own motor function when recognizing other person's movement. So uh, this, uh, such, 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 a, such a neuron, uh, was found for monkeys. So for example, uh, actually, so this monkey uh, is now eating a banana and the, uh, the neuron in the brain is activated uh, according, according to this movement. But yeah, so, but this monkey is just looking at another monkey eating banana. So this monkey uh, himself, doesn't eat banana, but uh, we can observe the same brain activity in his brain. So this is a mirror neuron. So this means that one simulates how to move his or her own body in the brain. This is simulation, but generation. So a similar theory was proposed for speech perception so one refers to his or her own articulatory function when recognizing other person's speech. So this idea is very interesting. So uh, I'd like to use this idea for code recognition. Yeah, so this is inference, uh, speech to phonemes. So this is generation, phoneme to speech. Based on this idea, we, form, we take a deep generative approach for, to code transcription. So first, uh, uh, as in the uh, thinking transcription, we assume that keys are stochastically generated according to this Markov model. And then some code progression is determined stochastically according to another Markov model. So this corresponds to a language model. And then a sequence of chroma vectors uh, is generated hmm, according to this acoustic model. So this is generation process. So this is inference process. And here uh, we formulate a variation of autoencoder to train this big model. So here, uh, actually, uh, we introduced two inference models. Um, so this one and this one. So this one is used for estimating code progression from the spectrogram. So this one is used for estimating key progression from the code progression. So this is a cascading estimation process. So and the, each, inference model is implemented by using a deep neural network, LSTM network. And then uh, these generative models and their inference models are trained simultaneously, jointly, such that the, likely, the log likelihood for this observed uh, input data is maximized. So this is our uh, BAE-based uh, uh, training of these inference models. And uh, according to this uh, framework, we can uh, perform 
the semi-supervised learning and using both annotated and non-annotated music signals. So this is very important step uh, to overcome the performance limitation in MIR field. So uh, this table shows the performance. And then uh, we compare the song, uh, the conventional song, song of called estimation function uh, and the, the state of the earth DNN based estimator and our technique. So they are, uh, we achieved the state of the art performance of code estimation. And the important thing is that the regularization, the inference model, the DNN based estimator can be appropriately regularized by using the language model and the generative model. Uh, in terms of the uh, musical naturalness and the reconstruction. So the DNA inference model can be uh, guided in terms of two important points, the construction and the music, musical naturalness. So this is a very important thing, uh, important feature of the BAE-based regularized training of the inference model. <clears throat> Okay, so let's move on to the drum transcription. So here we aim to detection of drum onset from music signals. Uh, here we focus on three major drum instrument, bass drum, snare drum, and hi-hats, as in uh, most of studies. And the, also the drum part is assumed to be separated from a music signal in advance by using some existing library. <clears throat> Okay, so here uh, we take a deep discriminative approach. <clears throat> so uh, this is our, uh, so this is our, uh, so this is uh, this is somehow different from the deep generative approach. But the so we are now uh, going towards the uh, pure, genuine uh, deep generative approach. So this is an intermediate report research progress. <clears throat> So actually, using the uh, according to the discriminative approach, the one uh, wants to train a deep inference model. Uh, this one uh, that maps the input spectrum into a drum score. So the, such a deep the inference model can be trained in a supervised manner in general by using paired data of the spectrograms and the uh, drum scores. So it's okay, and uh, so it works very well. Uh, so many studies on recent drum transition take this discriminative approach. But the, in this study, we incorporate a deep language model to regularize this deep inference model. And the, uh, we, and then we maximize the sum of the sum of these two scores. The language model evaluates the musical naturalness of the estimate, the output of our, of the network, and the uh, using the ground truth data, uh, we can uh, evaluate the uh, correct. We can evaluate the accuracy of the output of the network. So the the the, uh, the sum of the accuracy and the musical naturalness uh, is maximized in this regularized training framework. And uh, please note that the acoustic model is implicitly considered in this approach because basically the uh, in, in uh, according to the conventional classical probabilistic uh, classical stat statistical approach, we first formulate some probabilistic generative model, and then we formulate or incorporate a deep uh, inference model. So this is a typ typical approach. But the, so in the discriminative approach, uh, we directly 
uh, formulate uh, this deep de inference model, uh, which uh, in implicitly uh, involves the acoustic model or deep language model. Okay, so uh, this shows the experimental results. The uh, performance of drum trans transcription was improved by the degradation mechanism with the language model. So this is... Yeah, so uh, using the uh, language model based regularization, uh, we can uh, output the, a stable a drum score like this. Okay, so. Okay, so let's move on to the last part. So, uh, last part is about the piano transcription. So, in this task, uh, you can see very remarkable this uh, technical advance in piano roll estimation. For example, uh, the onset and frames method is a very well-known piano uh, piano transaction method. So the frame level accuracy of this method is around eighty or ninety percent. It's so good. And they recently a deep level Bison 3 plus, uh, which is based on 78 layers CNN for uh, originally proposed for semantic image segmentation, uh, was applied to a piano transcription. So uh, this method achieved the state of the art performance at uh, 2018. So uh, this is a sketch of this method. So the input data is a harmonic CFP. So the, uh, the original uh, uh, input data is sifted by several octaves and are conca concatenated. And then uh, using this very deep convolutional neural networks, um, uh, we can obtain a piano roll representation like this. So this means that the piano roll estimation uh, is regarded as semantic segmentation of our spectrogram regarded as an image. So it's a very straightforward, uh, straightforward application of the computer vision technique, but it works quite well. So uh, based on this uh, achievement, uh, we uh, aim we aim at complete, uh, we aim at a genuine music uh, piano transcription. So, but the, to, to do that, uh, ideally, uh, we want to take a deep generative approach, but the, now uh, as an intermediate step, uh, we take a, a semi uh, deep, uh, uh, we, we, we take a um, cascading approach. So this is semi-optimal, but practical. So actually, so most, most of studies aims at piano roll uh, estimation. So here, the input data is a spectrogram. The output is a piano roll. So this is a, this is a typical problem, problem setting of conventional uh, so-called piano transcription. So the, in this task, uh, we can use deep level version three plus for multi-bit estimation. So the frame level accuracy uh, is around eighty-seven uh, percent, which is very good. On top of this, uh, we first perform rhythm quantization based on a hidden Markov model. So, which consists of note value, not value estimation and onset quantization. So, basically, the onset information is important in multi-piste estimation, right? 
However, offset information is unreliable because the, in, in case of piano, the uh, pedal is often used, often used. So this means that the actual duration of each musical note does not always correspond to a score duration. So we, this means that we have to estimate or imagine the original duration of each musical note in this step by using some appropriate language model, strong language model. But HMM is, suf uh, is sufficient for that purpose. And then uh, we have to make a, make a left and right, right hand part separation. Uh, this is called voice separation. And then finally, uh, we can get a written score uh, through typesetting. So in this case, uh, this is another very, very important issue. Uh, but the, now we use a music score uh, for typesetting. Okay, so uh, this is the uh, demo. So this is the input uh, music signal. Uh, this is at the, at the beginner level. Like this. So very nice uh, high quality score can be obtained automatically. This is completely automatic. Okay, so let's see what happens for much more advanced musical piece. Yeah, this is so uh, first and dense uh, piano piece. So this is the uh, trans transcription result. <laughs> So uh, such a, a score can be obtained automatically. Okay, so and the are uh, using the uh, 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 vocal drum and the chord transcription method together, uh, we can develop our uh, music popular music transcription system. So uh, this is example. Uh, Yeah, yeah like this. So uh, we are now working on uh, dealing with a more various kind of musical instrument. No, not to uh, some of which might not be registered in the dictionary advance. Okay, so let me summarize my talk. So in this talk, uh, we, in terms of combination of acoustic model, a language model, and the inference technique, we can, uh, we introduced 
music structure analysis, singing transcription, chord transcription, drum transcription, and the piano transcription. Okay, so thank you very much. That's all. <laughs>